Hey guys, welcome to my market video for Eve Echoes. My name is Excoundrel. I create content for Auto Chess and Eve Echoes. And if you like this content, please consider subscribing. And if you don't want to subscribe and just watch it and chill out, feel free to do that too. But a like and a comment goes a long way to helping me out. Now, I do need to say that I'm not the only person that has created content on the Eve Echoes market. I will point you towards a video by Captain Benzie in the description below. He has covered the market in a similar way to me. There will probably be a lot of similar topics covered in this video, but I will try try to give my little twist on it, talk about some things that I don't think that he covered, and also the way that I approach the market is a little bit different too. So I'm going to first of all talk about what ITCs are. I'm going to then talk about buying and selling, buy orders and sell orders and how you can use them to make money to your advantage. I'm going to talk a little bit about my basic buying and selling flowchart. Um, I'm going to talk about prices and how you can gauge prices and what you should be doing to gauge the prices to sell at. So hopefully we'll go through all of that. Um, first of all, let's talk about ITCs. I'm currently in an ITC called Nakugard. It is a pretty popular station for buying and selling in EVE Echoes. It's about 10 jumps away from Jita and Jita is unarguably, especially in this phase of the beta, the most popular station for selling uh, and buying in EVE Echoes right now. ITCs stand, to, stand for Interstellar Trade Centers, and essentially what they are are designated locations throughout the Evecos universe that you can sell items. You can actually buy items anywhere. Um, as far as I'm aware, you don't even need to be in a station to actually buy an item on the market. Um, but you can only sell at designated ITC stations, which means if you want to get items instantly, you usually have to buy them at the ITC that you're trying to buy from, or you're going to have to travel some ways through jumps or, or in your own system to go to your nearest ITC. To find your nearest IT, ITC, it's pretty easy. You can do this from anywhere in your EVE Echoes app. You just need to click on the market sign, go down to the bottom and click the whatever it says nearby ITC. Mine is obviously the one that I'm in and you can just do that as set as destination. Obviously, I can't set the current nearest ITC as my destination because I'm in it, but that is the way to get to your closest interstellar trading center. So those are ITCs. That's the basics. That is the the absolute minimum that you need minimum that you need to know to get onto the market and start selling. Let's talk about selling at Interstellar Trade Centers. There is something that we need to consider before we go to sell at an Interstellar Trade Center or even choose an Interstellar Trade Center to sell at, because each Interstellar Trade Center is not born equal. You have a wide range of popularity when it comes to Interstellar Trade Centers. You have someone like Jita being the most popular and random N037 nullsec ITC being one, you know, some of the least popular. In general, Jita is the hub of commerce in, in, in all of the systems in Eve Echoes right now. If you want to buy an item, Jita will usually have it. It's where you're going to find the most expensive items, it's where you're going to find some of the highest tech items, and the reason people go there to sell is because they know people will buy. That is the benefit of Jita. It's a buyer's paradise, and if you're looking for a quick sale, it's a seller's paradise as well. Remember, when you come to sell and buy, your accounting skill determines how many orders you can have on the market, and that is encompassing both your buying and selling orders. So if you are looking to turn over your, your inventory quickly, Jita is going to be the place to do that, and you're going to be able to cycle through your orders very quickly. However, it has its drawbacks. Because there are so many sellers, in general, the price gets driven down. So you're going to find that you are constantly being undercut. You have to sell at a lower profit margin for most of the time uh, because there are just so many people at Jita trying to sell and they are going to undercut you every time, even if it's just by one credit, which is annoying. Then you have random null sec, you know, almost zero popularity. You can sell at ridiculously high prices because if someone on the off chance wants to buy your item, they're either going to have to discern traveling 30 jumps to Jita or buying your item at a higher marked value in Nullsec. Or generally does quite well in Nullsec because if someone's trying to make a base out of their, a Nullsec area and they want to build a ship there, you're, you're very unlikely to want to ship loads of ore out through Nullsec to a Nullsec station. And that is because uh, the, the, the transport is going to be at risk. You are... Uh, you're going to have to make a massive transport ship or, or transport trip yourself and you're going to be at risk. So in general, or does better out in Nullsec because if people are trying to make bases out of Nullsec areas and they want to uh, build ships there, they want to buy the ore directly at that, that base without having to risk it being shipped out and without having to risk it shipping it out themselves. However, or, you know, if you're trying to sell ore at Jita, there is more ore than, than, than 
isk, you know, over there. The, you can put a buy order in at Tritanium for one, and you're going to get f your inventory flooded with, with absolutely loads of it. So that's the, you know, the drawbacks of selling. Whereas the fittings and, and, and high-tech stuff will do well at Jita because someone's going to buy it at some point. And especially if you're some of the, the cutting-edge sellers on the market and you're selling some of the highest tech, you can charge decent prices at Jita anyway. So I like to find somewhere in the middle. This is why I'm at Nakagad. Uh, Nakagad is a, a decent popularity uh, station. It has anywhere between 20 and 60 guests. It has a good turnover. Um, and I can sell most of my product here, including ore and including fittings, albeit lower prices than out in Nullsec, but higher prices than Jita, which is why I like Nakagad as a station. So that's popularity of ITCs. That's the first thing that you need to consider. And that's the first step that it comes to selling stuff on the market. The second step is choosing that item. I'm not going to tell you what items to sell because everything will sell to someone, so that doesn't matter. Let's choose an item. Let's say um, Mark 7 Missile Guidance Computer. Let's have a look at market details. All right, so a very wide array of prices that you can see on the market right now, um, really ranging between 250000 and $1 million. The most important thing is I find out what is currently selling at my station. Well, it doesn't look like this is selling at my station right now, at all across the market so i can probably sell this for whatever i whatever i want realistically i need to then take into account the closest competitors uh jita is my closest competitor how i then now, now need to make an assessment how far do i think someone who is going to buy at nakagad is willing to travel to pick up a missile guidance computer well i don't think if i put this on for one million i think someone would travel problem someone new especially would probably travel 10 jumps for five hundred thousand isk um, I'm probably comfortable putting missile guidance computers on the market at Nakagad for 800,000 because I think that someone is very unlikely to want to travel 10 jumps to Jita for the sake of 800,000 uh, for the sake of 300,000 ISK. I want to try and find something that is on the market um let's see a Mark 7 1 MN afterburner. So okay, this is good. This is a good one to talk about. At my station 150,000. Now you want to scroll down just to double check that that's the case, and it is. So at my station, 150,000. At Jita, 100,000. So I'm going to hit somewhere in the middle there. I'm actually going to put all of these on the market for a 145,000, um, because someone at my there's someone at my station. Uh, wait a second. There's someone at my station at 150. Bloody hell! I can't type. Uh, at, my, at my station for 150,000. So I want to beat the majority market price because I know that people are going to want to be lazy and not and not want to. Ooh, one second, there's a, there's a guy at my door. So someone actually came to my door. It was a dishwasher getting delivered. Um, but what you can see here is actually very quickly my uh, Mark One. Uh, so Mark 7 1 MN Afterburner sold for 150,000. Oh, sorry, 145,000 really quickly. Now, uh, on every piece of uh, item that you sell, there is a 8% market tax, or at least I think it's an 8% market tax. I'm going to quickly do the calculations on this, just in case uh, I get this wrong. 12,325 divided by 145,000. Oh, sorry, it's uh, an 8.5% market tax. There we go. So there's an 8.5% 8 market tax on everything that you sell. So you have to be aware that when you list your prices that you're always going to lose a 8.5% tax to the game. It is a transaction tax. That is um, essentially what happens all the time. So and now I need to remember where we got to. Uh, we talked about closest competitors. Oh yeah, that's another thing. We talked about how close your competitors are. Uh, it also comes down to what type of item that you're selling. Um, if you're selling a fitting, for instance, let's say we're, let's say we're going to sell this Mark uh, Mark Seven Stasis Weber Fire, um, which I think I could feasibly sell for. Well, the closest to me is like thirteen jumps at one thousand two hundred. So I think I could feasibly sell this at like what what one point four million. Maybe even more than that, but let's go with 1.4 million because I think I'm going to sell them for that. I could probably sell those Stasis Weber fires at 1.4 million. Um, the reason I did that is because you have to assess that, okay, if there was anyone within six jumps of me, maybe nine jumps of me, and it was 1 million, I'd probably put it on for a similar price. The reason being is if someone's going to buy a singular part, a lot of the time they are going to be much, much more inclined to jump nine jumps to pick up a singular part for two reasons one they can fit it on their ship straight away when they get to the station or two they can fit it in their cargo hold and bring it back to their station for the ship whichever ship they're fitting out if i want to sell let's say um megzalion in large volumes usually people buy up ore to build ships which means they're going to buy a crap ton of ore in one go um that means they're going to have to pay shipping costs to move it 
So when you're pricing up your ore, remember to price it next to your station's prices rather than the station's 10, 20 jumps away. Because when people buy ore, it's generally either in bulk to process it or in bulk to buy it to build a ship. And therefore, they're going to have to pay shipping fees. They're going to have to pay, or, or they're going to have to make large trips by themselves. If it's in null sec, it's incredibly risky. So essentially, when you're selling ore, remember to price that exactly against your station. Especially if you're a popular station, people do not want to pay shipping fees. It's, they're very expensive. They'd much rather pay a slight premium on the price of the ore itself. Uh, and bear in mind when you're buying as well, you do have shipping fees to pay if you don't want to collect it yourself. If you don't own a shipping container, then uh, shipping, it your, uh, shipping it is going to co be costly and therefore paying a slight premium on the actual product is often always beneficial. So that is what I do when I approach selling the market. Let's run through the checklist. How popular is your ITC? Too popular, you won't get good prices. You'll have to be competitive. Not popular enough, you'll never sell anything. What are the current prices at your station? Always price against your station and then then compare to your closest competitors. So that is anyone from six to nine to 10 jumps away. And then think about what type of uh, product you're selling. If it's a fitting, they are much, much, much more likely to want to travel to pick up a singular fitting because A, they can fit it in their cargo hold and B, they can fit it directly to the ship when they get there. If it's ore, often price it against your station because people do not want to buy bulk ore and pay for shipping fees and also then have to transport it themselves. So that's another thing to think about when selling. Those are my selling tips at ITCs. Let's talk about buying now. So, so far we've covered selling, gauging the prices based on where you are in your station, choosing an ITC station. Uh, we've also talked a little bit about what ITCs are, talking about ore versus fittings. Let's talk a little bit about buy orders because this is something that people don't often look at, either when selling or buying, actually. Um... You usually find that buy orders are often put out on ore specifically. Let's go to Noxium. Let's go to sell. Um, or rather, uh, rather, let's not go to sell. Let's go to view market details and have a look at the buy orders right here. You can see that someone is looking to buy Noxium at 46000 at a at a unit price of 1200 I could go to Noxium with even just a small part of my... Uh, sorry, I could go to Jita with a small part of my Noxium and fulfill a buy order at 1200 is anyone at my station currently buying? Doesn't look like anyone at my station. Uh, no, a lot in Amar. A lot of people in Amar. No one at my station currently sitting at a buy order. But it's always worth when you're looking to sell a product, especially something like um, or going to the market details and checking the buy orders. And if you're at that station or you're near that station, you can take that product to the station that you want to sell at and fulfill a buy order for the pr highest price. Because often buy orders are very generous because people really want to get that product at their station. It's a essentially their way of circumventing shipping fees and getting the seller to ship for them. That's why they often price it at a very generous way. However, you can use that in reverse as well. Let's say you want to build a ship. Um, I did this just recently for my retriever. I don't even know if I've got any ship. Oh, yeah, here we go. Retriever blueprint. I actually have another one for some reason. Let's say that I want to get the uh, isogen for my retriever. I can go at this station. The price is ridiculous. For some reason, someone's listed a, a load at a very ridiculous price. Um, but let's say that I go to a buy order and I want to buy um, isogen at this station. I'm pretty comfortable buying isogen at this station for 20 I reckon 20 is pretty good. So let's say I want to buy, I, I don't want to build another retriever, but let's just say I want to buy 2,000 isogen at 20 per unit price. If anybody has listed isogen at Nekagard at a 20 per unit price, I will automatically buy this. So they have them. So if anyone then goes on to list isogen at 20 per unit price, I will automatically buy it. Let's see if I can, I'll do it with Tritanium to show you show you when someone does list it. Let's say I want to order or get Tritanium in at 2. Okay, cool. Um, let's say I want to buy 1,000. So if anyone has listed Tritanium at 2 ISK at Nekugard, I'll buy it right now instantly. There we go. The item has already been deposited. So buy orders are a good way of sourcing materials that you want for a certain price. Now, obviously, that price has to be competitive. Otherwise, no one will be listing it and you'll never get that buy order fulfilled. Um, if someone has already got stuff listed on the market that no one has bought and there are no pre-existing buy orders for it, just like I showed you there with my Tritanium, um, you will automatically buy out that unit on the market at your station and it will be deposited. It has to be at your station though. If it's not at your station, it's up to someone, a seller, to fulfill it 
and come to your station and deliver the product. It's again, it's essentially a way of trying to circumvent having to pay shipping fees yourself and getting the seller to pay shipping fees. But as a set, as a buyer, you can actually often get a really good price, plot price just by putting a buy order out. Because what happens at your station is if your buy order is next to be fulfilled and someone then sells um, at your someone then sells product at your station for the price that you've got a buy order at the the, the the game will always prioritize the buy order at the highest unit price so that benefits the seller the most. So let's say that, that everybody else had buy orders at 19 and I had buy orders at 20 for Isogen. If someone came to Nakugard, just randomly listed their Isogen in, in at 20, it would fulfill my buy order and then uh, I would immediately get that fulfilled. So it will also automatically fulfill buy orders when someone sells at the station, even if they aren't intending on filling a, um, f fulfilling a buy order specifically. So it's a good way of netting materials for yourself or netting products for yourself if you just put a buy order out there. They do usually get fulfilled over time. Um, often I found that people just not really understanding what price to sell their product at, just put it on the market and my buy order instantly gets fulfilled and I get cheap products and cheap materials. It's a good way to actually get around high prices on materials by fulfilling a buy order that's all i've got to say about the market again like i said we covered itcs we covered buying and selling we covered buying and selling strategy how to price your stuff what to sell in terms of fittings and ores and also looking at buy orders which are pretty important as well so uh, that's everything on the market uh, i hope you guys enjoyed it and i hope you get something useful out of it for the next wave of the eve echoes beta because it's probably going to be less useful for you in the next four days as we are about to wipe these characters but it is useful information as we go on and don't forget if you like this please subscribe it really means a lot to me